Hey everyone and welcome back to another industry report. The Valorant hype machine is upon us and it might bode poorly for Blizzard's Overwatch, a game with a, uh, well, rather questionable esports scene. The closed beta of Valorant has launched and the intense marketing seems to have given way to, well, genuine community interest and engagement. But as Riot's new shooter is breaking Twitch records, we've got to ask one thing. How did this happen? Why has it happened? And why are Overwatch pro players fleeing their own esports scene? What does that say about how Blizzard are managing that game? I mean, you might think, surely Valorant is a threat to Counter-Strike. Well, as we'll get into it, Riot seem to be here to show both Blizz and Valve how it's done. At least they would hope so. Now, today's video is brought to you by our excellent patrons, Two things. Number one, the daily briefing. Our news team does all the research, all the writing, then we boil it down into one single, fast, easy to read daily report, ensuring you are always up to date with the gaming news. Then second, loot. Do you love fantasy stuff? We've got fantasy stuff. Priest, Pin, Troll Jungles, this sticker, Raptors. Oh, and to celebrate classic TBC, some science fiction fantasy landscapes. All from our game studio's art team, right to your post box. Cheers for keeping us stable in these uh, rather harsh times. And with that, let's go. Valorant exploded onto the scene with a gameplay reveal event that featured pretty much most of the notable streamers under the sun. The closed beta was announced for April 7th and keys could be earned via, of course, watching the participating streams. Riot were pretty darn clever in how they used these streaming partners for the event. Some footage was actually locked off until later in the day and that required what? It required increased watch time for people to get the new info, so they really incentivized that. Additionally, streamers conducted interviews with Valorant staff until pretty late into the evening for some of those days, and that meant that Riot just maintained this stranglehold on Twitch for so long. Now, fast forward to this week. The beta has been accessible for the people with the keys, and hype has transformed into, well, community interest, excitement. Riot have pretty much handled everything very well so far, even bouncing back from some day one connection uh, issues that the game faced. Now, esports, it's an industry that is always hungry for the next big thing to throw stupid amounts of investment dollars in, and Riot are obviously aware of that, combining mystery with just enough info to peak people's interests. 1.7 million people tuned into Valorant at once this week, leaving it about 50k short of League's all-time Twitch record and beating Fortnite's 1.69 million record as well. Take those numbers with a bit of a grain of salt though, because yeah, I mean, offering a beta key is sure to inflate those viewer numbers. It does though mean that those are viewers who want to play, or probably want to play, Maybe some want to sell beta key access. I mean, some actual beta accounts are fetching a real high price right now. Anyway, Riot successfully played the industry well using the lessons from other games. Their strong emphasis on the partnered streamers, what's that reminiscent of? I mean, pretty obviously, Apex Legends' surprise launch, while the Twitch drops again just reflect successful community engagement events. So what of the game? I mean, the industry likes to describe new titles as X meets Y, and Valorant is of course no exception. It's a team-based tactical shooter with a little focus on hero abilities, so it's basically CSGO with a little pinch of Overwatch. The most endangered game, therefore, should be CSGO, because it's the most similar to that, right? No. Overwatch is the game that's got pros right now who are dropping off like crazy. The reason for this is that Overwatch is in a bit of a shambles. It's basically being slowly strangled into irrelevance by a seemingly slow and incompetent blizzard. They kind of refuse to let this esports scene die, and there's obviously a sequel on the way, although even if that does a lot, I'd worry it would be just too little too late. I mean, the parting statements from some of the Overwatch pros, they're nothing short of damning. And that kind of reflects, well, the parting statement of a whole bunch of the Overwatch League's casting talent, who, as we covered in another video, well, did leave, and many of them did not have nice things to say. That is, of course, stuff that we've talked about before on this channel. You know, there's been this massive investment in Overwatch League, not that much return. Like, team owners seem pissed, there's a dictatorial management there, and just this willingness to lose that key talent rather than to share creative control. Activision Blizzard hide all of this from the general fan base, though, and possibly from investors, by repeatedly asserting that, yes, the Overwatch League is healthy and stable and growing. And that is backed up by Overwatch League viewer numbers. Allegedly, 
allegedly. Five million Chinese fans were watching over the weekend on the Chinese site Bill Bill. Or Bill, is it Billy Billy? I, I forget. Anyway, now the league is often ridiculed though for inflating its viewership numbers. Like in EU and NA, those numbers are typically around 40k. The lucrative Chinese market, though, is of course a attractive prospect for the Western enterprises who are maybe, you know, in need of a bit of investment. They want some more cash. They want to really show growth potential. So obviously for an unprofitable esports league in need of a bailout, inflating Chinese numbers makes sense. A massive fan base in China could help to leverage some funds there. Now, what happens if you don't have that big of a fan base in China? Well, you could always pretend that you do. Now, if doubting those numbers, which I do, if that sounds unfair, well, Riot had an issue with viewer numbers back in 2018. They were credited with 127 million peak concurrent viewers for the mid-season Invitational. That's absurd. They did some investigations, and they found out that, in truth, the peak was just shy of 20 million. Still enormous and impressive, but significantly fewer than sources were reporting. There are tons and tons of reports from 2017 and 2018 of Asian click farms giving some Chinese videos and streams view counts into the billions. And it's zero secret to anyone in the esports industry who's worth their salt that, I mean, even in the West, the viewership figure should be taken with buckets of salt. I mean, there's even dirty tactics like wiki embeds that have been used in the past as well, which, I mean, obviously isn't good. As it stands then, Valorant may not compete with Overwatch so much as it may uh, slightly destroy it, at least for esports. Riot's ties to Tencent afford them a very strong position in the burgeoning Chinese market, of course. Valorant, being a free-to-play that's capable of running on most PCs, that does make it, I'd say, more accessible than Overwatch, and Riot's experience in the esports scene could really solidify its popularity. Uh, I mean, not even among just, like, the fans, but also the players. Riot will put in their weight and their expertise from running League of Legends for years into this project. To that end, then, they may even put the fear into CSGO. CS does have a dedicated community, and Valorant's modern hero shooter flavor, that might not resonate well with some of the traditional Counter-Strike audience. However, Counter-Strike GO players have often been frustrated with Valve's approach to some elements of game balance. Basically, Valve are seen to often step in too late, and sometimes their changes don't really make that much sense. CS players also have not had that much choice in games of that style, so to them, Valorant may be a, brash, uh, a breath of, you know, fresh but familiar air. Skills will also transfer over from CS more than from Overwatch, and Riot are sure to back their tournaments with fat, fat stacks of cash and, of course, their existing sponsor connections. For CS players, therefore, that are outside the top tier of uh, competition, yeah, this could be their chance to make it big, just like it could be for many Overwatch players who are also hopping over. It's essentially a, just a gold rush for skilled players because, well, making your name as a strong player in a popular beta, that is a great way to build up your name. And then also, just for a bit of fun, Valorant is not about T's trying to plant bombs, right? And that may look better for sponsors. That, that just could be a little bit of conjecture, though. I mean, certainly the squeaky clean flavor of Overwatch is something that has had for a time at least seemed to have done well. Now, Valve, of course, they can't rest in their laurels, so hopefully, right, their new vigor of them improving Steam a lot and finally releasing a Half-Life game, hopefully that'll carry over to the CS site. Valve, they really do seem to be at their best when someone is just lighting a fire underneath them and they're kind of forced to move. And to be completely fair here, Riot are far from perfect. I mean, just look at the stuff Richard Lewis would say about them, and most of that's yeah, seems fairly true. And even with the non-scandalous Riot things, it took them years to get their main League of Legends league to where it is, and they have made countless missteps along the way. And even today, I mean, they operate their communities with this positivity above all approach that really does feel very fake, and I really don't think it would gel that well with the CS audience. Plus, I mean, they may both be esports, but a MOBA and an FPS, they are fundamentally different, and they do need to be approached as such. However, Riot are better positioned than both Blizzard, and I'd say a little bit better than Valve, to dominate in this space, be that for better or for worse. Overall, Valorant's hype may indeed be inflated by marketing trickery, perfectly executed, but a lot of people are clearly excited, right? People broke Twitch records for a chance to access Valorant's beta, so clearly the industry is again searching for that next big thing. Riot have said that they don't want to stay in beta for too long with this game, so an actual release date, well, it should be incoming decently soon. 
Once this game is out in the open, well, that'll be the true test, right? Will Riot be able to replicate their success? Will they end up with two of the largest esports under their banner? And if they do, I mean, that certainly would be a knock to Blizzard's esports ambitions. They've got their World of Warcraft stuff, which I think just ticks along fine and serves that part of the World of Warcraft community, but it's always been clear that, I mean, the same goes for StarCraft as well, which is my personal favorite esport. I, I love StarCraft uh, 2 esports. Uh, but the one that they clearly have primed for investment, primed for the just, you know, insane scale, big money, big glitz, it's clearly Overwatch. And what are we seeing? Well, the team are pretty slow to change things. They make a lot of balanced decisions that the players are not particularly happy about. They did a really bad job of retaining their talent. Apparently, it's pretty poorly ran, pretty badly mismanaged. And if you want to learn more about that, well, hey, why not check out our video that is going into some of Richard Lewis's reporting on that situation. So there you go, whole bunch of content today. I'd love to know though, are you into Valorant, right? Are you excited for it? Are you a CSGO player, an Overwatch player? If you're either of those, like where does Valorant stack up for you? I would love to know. So with that, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.